Here I will discuss the assignment on units 5 and 6. In the first question you are asked to calculate the power delivered by the current source. There is just one current source here and essentially you have to find what is the voltage across it so that you can find out the power delivered. By the way, in general if you have a current source in a circuit, you could have the current source absorbing power or delivering power. But if the current source is the only source of energy in the circuit, then it has to be delivering power. Okay. So, in this case for instance, all the other elements are resistors which can only dissipate power. So, the current source will have to be delivering power and the power delivered will have to come out positive. Okay. So, now we have uh, 1 kilo ohm and 3 kilo ohm in series. So, together these will give you 4 kilo ohm. Okay. These two together and then I have 4 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm in parallel and that that gives you 0.8 kilo ohms. Okay. So, now we have 5 milliamp flowing through 0.8 kilo ohm. So, the voltage with this polarity is 4 volts. Okay. Now, if you take this polarity 4 volts and the current consistent with the passive sign convention, this current will be minus 5 milliampere. So, the power delivered to the current source or the power absorbed by the current source it equals minus 20 milliwatts. Okay, That is minus 5 milliamps times 4 volts. Of course, you are asked for the power delivered by the current source, which is the negative of whatever is absorbed by the current source. So, the power, if you calculate what is delivered, it will be plus 20 milliwatts. And like I said, if you have a single energy source in the circuit, it will be delivering positive power or it will be absorbing negative power. So, the answer is 20. Okay. Again, read these instructions. You are asked to give the power in milliwatts. And the second question, again it is related to energy. So, you have some uh, network, some circuit here and when it is driven by a 5 volt source, it delivers 1.2 joules of energy in 1 minute and it is also given that this circuit consists only of resistors. So, equivalently it looks like some resistor connected across the 5 volt source. Okay. So, I have 5 volts and there is some R between these two. This is A and B. There is some equivalent resistance between A and B. An energy of 1.2 joules is absorbed over a period of 60 seconds. So, that is 1200 millijoules over 60 seconds, which gives you basically 20 milliwatts and that is equal to 5 volt square divided by R. So, R will be 25 volt square divided by 20 and I have this milli. So, this will be in kilo ohms or 1.25 kilo ohms. So, in the second circuit, I have 12.5 volts across 1.25 kilo ohms. So, that causes a current of 10 milliamp to flow in that direction. So, I 1 is the opposite of this direction. So, I 1 is minus 10 milliamps. Okay. So, you are given some information about the power or energy in this uh, situation. From that, you can calculate the resistance. The second part is straightforward. From that resistance and the given voltage, you calculate the current. Okay. The third question, uh, current source is pushing current into a capacitor and the capacitor is initially discharged. Okay. So, you are asked to find the energy stored in the capacitor after some time. The energy stored in the capacitor is half C times the square of the voltage on the capacitance. So, what you have to calculate is the voltage across the capacitor at T equals 4 milliseconds. Okay. So, this kind of problem you have solved many times before you know that the capacitor's voltage is integral over this time period that is 0 to 4 millisecond of the current 
divided by the capacitance plus the initial voltage which of course is given to be 0 and this integral is this area which is 3 milliseconds times 1 milliamp and divided by capacitance which is 1 microfarad. So, this gives you 3 volts okay. and the energy stored on the capacitor is half C V squared which is half times 1 microfarad times 3 volt square this gives you 4.5 micro joules. Okay. So, please use the correct scaling factors here and then arrive at the answer. Uh, you are required to give the answer in uh, micro joules. So, the answer is 4.5. Okay. The next question, we have an inductor which at t equal to 0 has uh, current of 0 okay. and you have a voltage source across the inductor and also a current source. Now, first of all it is important to realize that uh, because you have the 2 volt voltage source across the inductor, you simply have 2 volts here and the inductor current will increase linearly because of this uh, constant voltage across the inductor. Now, what you are asked to calculate is the energy delivered by the voltage source from t equal to 0 to t equal to 3 microseconds. So, you have to calculate the current that is flowing out of the voltage source right? and you are given some uh, current I of t. First, you have to calculate the current in the inductor. Okay, Let me call that I L and the current from the voltage source will be I L minus I. Okay, So, that is what you need to calculate. Now, the inductor initially has uh, 0 current. So, the current in the inductor it will be 1 over L 1 over 1 micro Henry and the integral of 2 volt with respect to time. So, this what it gives you is 2 times 10 to the 6 times T amperes. Okay. So, the inductor current if you plot it, it grows at the rate of uh, 2 times 10 to the 6 amperes per second or 2 amperes per micro second. Now, I will plot it on the same uh, graph, the x axis is in micro second and you have 1, 2 and 3 microseconds. This uh, number here, the, the expression for the inductor current, this means that at t equals 1 microsecond, I have 2 amperes, t equals 2 microsecond, I have 4 amperes and so on. So, the inductor current itself does that okay? and the slope of that is 2 ampere per microsecond and the current delivered by the voltage source is the inductor current minus this I. Okay? The purpose of this problem is to first of all make sure that you can calculate the inductor current correctly and also you can uh, do simple Kirchhoff's current law calculations. Okay? So, what I have to do is to subtract this red curve from the green one. So, what will I get? The current will be 0 until t equals 1 microsecond. After that, the difference between these two is a straight line. So, it goes like that. Okay? So, that is the current from the voltage source I V. So, I have to multiply this current by 2 volts okay, and integrate the area under it. Now, because I am multiplying it by a constant, so what I can do is I can take this area first and multiply it by the constant voltage. So, this area you will easily see it is a triangle. So, it is half the base is 2 microsecond and the height will be 4 amperes. Okay. So, this is 4 ampere times microsecond which is 4 micro coulomb and the energy delivered by the uh, voltage source is 2 volts times 4 micro coulombs which is 8 micro joules. You are asked for the energy in micro joules. So, the answer is 8. Okay. So, again uh, first you have to recognize that uh, 
uh, there is two volts across the inductor, so its current is linearly increasing. Then, what you are asked for is the energy delivered by the voltage source. So, you have to see how much current is flowing out of the voltage source, and that is a combination of the current in the inductor and this current source current. And you calculate this uh, current, integrate that, multiply it by the voltage to get the energy. Okay. This one is just a network of uh, voltage and current sources. This is given so that uh, first of all you can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law correctly, and then also recognize that some of the independent sources could be dissipating power, some others could be delivering power. What you are asked for is the power delivered by this. Okay. So as usual, if you have a two terminal element, you take the voltage and current with the passive sign convention. The power absorbed will be V times I, that is power absorbed by this element. Okay. And the power delivered will be exactly the negative of this. Okay. So, now this is not uh, difficult at all. First of all, we have 5 amperes here due to this uh, current source on the right side and out of that 1 ampere is going that way. So, here we will have 4 amperes. Okay, Then, pretty much we know everything. So, this is 1 ampere, this is 4 amperes and again we have 4 amperes going that way and minus 5 amperes going that way or 5 amperes going upwards. So, the current in this would be 1 ampere in that direction. Okay. So, now uh, what I will do is I will calculate the power absorbed by every element just as illustration. Okay. First thing is you denote the voltage and current of every element consistent with the passive sign convention. Okay. Now, the first of them yeah, let us say you choose the voltage any which way you want, but then the next one that you have the current should be consistent with passive sign convention. Okay. So, let us say I take it for the 5 volt source, I take the voltage this way and it is 5 volt by the definition of the voltage source and I have to take the current flowing into wherever I have defined the positive to be this one and that is 1 ampere and similarly for this I take 2 volts like that and I have to take the current in that direction and from here you see that that current is minus 4 ampere and for uh, this current source, I will take the current in this direction and that is minus 5 ampere and I will take the voltage in that direction and that one we know is 5 volts. Okay. And again, uh, this current here is 5 amperes and this voltage is from Kirchhoff's voltage law, you have this plus that one. So, that is 7 volts okay and for this current source let me take the current in this direction it is 1 ampere so i have to take the voltage this way and and that is 3 volts okay and finally, for this uh, voltage source, so let me take the current in this direction that is 1 ampere and the voltage in that direction is minus 10 volts. So, from this I can calculate the uh, power absorbed by every element. So, for this one it is 5 volts times 1 ampere, so that is 5 watts and for this one it is minus 5 amperes times 5 volts. So, that is minus 25 watts and for this one it is 2 volts times minus 4 amperes. So, that is minus 8 watts and for this one it is 1 ampere times uh, 3 volts. So, that is 3 watts and for this one it is 5 amperes times uh, 7 volts. So, that is 35 watts and finally, for this one we have 1 ampere times minus 10 volts. So, that is minus 10 watts. Okay. 
and you sum the power absorbed by all the elements obviously we will end up with zero the question that you are asked is for the power delivered by this we know that the power absorbed by this 5 volt source is 5 watts so the power delivered by that is minus 5 watts okay that's for this one but of course you could uh, calculate the power absorbed or delivered by any other element and in this again the question is for the power delivered and you have a control source here okay but the principle is always the same you simply calculate the power by computing the voltage across the element and the current through the element okay so this vx is minus 2 volts so the current flowing in that direction is 5 milli siemens times vx which is minus 10 milliamps so let me take the voltage to be in this polarity for the voltage source it's 2 volts and the current in that polarity again uh, i have said this many times consistent with passive sign convention is 10 milliamps so the power absorbed by the voltage source is 2 volts times uh, 10 milliamps equals 20 milliwatts absorbed okay in this element so the power delivered by that is actually the negative of that which is minus 20 so in this particular case uh, the 2 volt source is actually absorbing power and this controlled current source is delivering power okay and in this circuit you are asked to determine the energy delivered by the current source from t equals 0 to t equals 4 milli siemens okay of course you can go and calculate uh, the actual vx that results from this and so on okay by integrating the current but it turns out that in this particular problem you don't need any of that okay if you did all of those things it's perfectly all right but uh, if you look at it a little carefully you see that vx this is a voltage control voltage source and this vx is defined to be across the capacitor so if you calculate the voltage across the current source in terms of vx we'll have vx this way and minus vx so across the current source we have zero volts always okay so we don't need the details of anything the energy absorbed by the current source is always zero and the energy delivered obviously is also zero okay so in this case it turns out that the control source is what is uh, delivering energy okay so because we have zero volts across the current source energy delivered equals zero okay and this is a multiple choice question you are asked to identify uh, passive elements and this is pretty straightforward right uh, it's assumed that uh, i and v are uh, chosen consistent with passive sign convention that's how we plot iv characteristics of elements so if you have characteristics in either uh, second quadrant or fourth quadrant it is not necessarily passive okay so you see that this has no part of its characteristic in the fourth quadrant this one has it and this one has in both second and fourth quadrants so b and d are not passive a and c are passive okay that's what is given here now this one uh, the circuit looks complicated basically it's an exercise in both uh, solving for uh, circuits using superposition and then of course calculating the power delivered by some sources okay now you are asked for the power delivered by the minus 2 volt source which is here which means that you have to calculate the current okay so the voltage in this polarity is minus 2 volts and you calculate this i okay once you do that you know the power absorbed by the voltage source which is minus 2 volts times i and you can calculate everything else okay so now we have uh, multiple independent sources okay and you solve for this by superposition so i will uh, 
not show the detail of every step, but I will show you the four scenarios which have to be superposed. There are four independent sources, right? For superposition, you have only one of the sources to be non-zero at a time. Set all the other sources to zero and uh, sum up the solutions. That is, when I say sum up the solution, you sum up the voltages or currents resulting from that, not the power. Okay, voltages and currents can be superposed. So let's do that. First, let me take the minus two volt source, and if I set this voltage to zero, it's a short circuit. the current source this is an open circuit and this is a short circuit so the resulting circuit is just this okay these are all 2 kilo ohms and these are all 1 kilo ohms and you can solve for this you will find that the current flowing this way would be 1 milliampere in this case. Okay. Next, you take the other voltage source. Okay, this is one volt in this direction, and the current from this turns out to be in this direction minus one by four milliampere. Okay. Let me take the third case that is having only this current source active. This is four milliampere. In this case, current flowing here turns out to be one milliampere. Okay, again you can solve for this and find out. And finally, the last of the voltage sources, I have eight volts over here. Okay. If you calculate the current here, it turns out to be half a milliampere. Now, this current I here is simply the sum of all these 1 minus 1 fourth plus 1 plus half. So, this I will be 2.25 milliampere. So, the power absorbed by the minus 2 volt source is minus 2 volts times 2.25 milliampere, which is minus 4.5 milli watts. So, the power delivered by this is simply the negative which is plus 4.5 milli watts. Okay. So, that is all that is there to it. Now, this question is pretty simple. You should uh, determine the number of independent KCL equations. So, what you need to do is to count the number of nodes. Node is a point of connection of two or more components. So, this is a node, that is a node, this is a node that is a node, that is a node, this one is a node and that one is a node. Okay. So, we identified points of connection in the circuit where two or more components get connected. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and we know that the number of independent KCL equations that can be written is the number of nodes minus 1 which is 7 minus 1 equals 6. Okay. And the same circuit here, this time you are asked to determine the number of 
Kirchhoff's voltage law equations. Okay. So what we do is again let me identify the nodes and then draw a graph of the circuit. I have identified let me identify the nodes same as what I had before. So, the number of nodes n is 7 and I have to identify the branches. Branches are basically every element in this I have to count that. So, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, the number of branches is 11. We know that the number of uh, independent loops that can be formed is b minus n plus 1 which turns out to be 5. Okay. So, hopefully you are able to do all of these correctly. As usual, if you made a mistake, then uh, do not just look at my explanation, go back and uh, solve the problem independently and make sure that you get the same answer. Okay. And another thing to do is of course, if you make a mistake, go back and see where you made a mistake and uh, understand that properly, so that you do not repeat the mistake as far as possible. Okay.